Hi everyone and welcome to this Chime 2 tutorial. My name is Lena Flöll and I'm a doctoral researcher in the Food Systems Biotechnology group of Professor Nikola Stopokolic at ETH Zurich in Switzerland and today I want to talk about the core phylogenetic diversity metrics method. So first I'm going to give a quick overview to get us oriented. Um, so this is the overall Chime 2 workflow, I'm sure you've seen it before. So far, you have probably imported the data. If necessary, you have demultiplexed it. And the last thing you probably did was denoising and clustering. So you end up with representative sequences and the feature table. And the diversity analysis is typically the first actual downstream analysis performed. And the core um, phylogenetic metrics are great for this because they automatically calculate and visualize a series of common alpha and beta diversity metrics for us. And as you can see, this method is based on the feature table as well as some phylogeny um, that we can pass it as well as the metadata. So I thought I'm gonna start with some basics and give some background to refresh our memory and to make it easier to understand why we use these input files and also how to interpret the results. So comparing diversity is not trivial at all. And there are so many different matrices and units out there um, so I thought I'm going to start with this very quick example on how to do this. So how can we compare the diversity of these three samples? First, we can have a look at what species are present, right? So we can say in sample A, we have green ones, we have blue ones, we have red ones. Sample B, we also have red ones, but also yellow and brown. So comparing these counts of different species is what we call richness. And of course, we see at first glance that this alone does not tell us a lot of how diverse these two samples actually are. So what we also do is count how many of each species do we actually have in each sample. So for sample A, this would be two green ones, two blue ones, a red one. Sample B, three red ones, two yellow, one brown one. So we can say sample A is more even than sample B, which means it is just numerically more equal in the number of species, and that is what we call evenness, so the distribution of species. And last but not least, we can have a look at how related these species are to each other, right? And um, you can see immediately that it does not help us alone to look at these samples. We need additional information. Um, this is what we call phylogenetic information. So here we have this phylogenetic tree that is rooted. And then we can say, oh, the red one is actually much closer related to the blue one than it is to the yellow one. And this is what we call phylogenetic diversity, so the phylogenetic differences between species. So in practice, when we do this with CHIME2, CHIME2 does it for us, of course, and uh, it provides us with a feature table, which is basically the same what we just did manually. So we look at sample A, we have one red one, we have two blue ones, two green ones, and so on. And then we also have the phylogeny, an artifact that is a phylogeny rooted. Uh, and just as a disclaimer, here in this example, I have been talking about different species. But of course, we're actually working with amplicon sequencing variants, so ASVs, or OTUs, so operational taxonomic units, which are, of course, only proxies for species. Now, what are the common diversity matrices? Um, I mentioned that there are several out there. And here I just go over the ones that are calculated by default in CHIME2 core diversity in this pipeline we're using. So to look at alpha diversity, so that means how many features are observed in each community, we have Shannon's diversity index, which looks at richness and evenness, so it is weighted by abundance. We have observed features, which is the richness, so virtually only the number of different features present. We have phase phylogenetic diversity, so the phylogenetic richness, PLU's evenness, which is only the evenness. Um, and then moving on to beta diversity, so how different is the microbial composition between samples? We have the Chakar distance, so that is the unique features between samples, but regardless of their abundance. We have uh, Bray Curtis distance, which is the compositional similarity, but weighted by abundance. We have unweighted unifrac distance. That is defined as the fraction of unshared phylogenetic branch length, which is quite a mouthful, but you'll have a separate tutorial on beta diversity metrics. And the weighted unifrac is the same, but just weighted by feature abundance. So I hope it's more clear now to you how the diversity analysis is so central as a first starting point, why we use the feature table as an input, why it's good to have a phylogenetic tree, and why we also use the metadata. 
Now, if you're doing this at home, you'll probably be working in the terminal, so using the command line. And then your command looks something like this, so using the diversity plugin and calling on the core metrics phylogenetic pipeline. And we only have to do is um, specify the input phylogeny, so that's your rooted tree, specify an input table, that's the feature table we get from clustering. Um, we add a sampling depth that we get from looking at the rare refraction tables, um, pass the metadata file, and then we only have to specify an output directory. Um, so it's very simple actually, and I'm going to show you this in the Chime 2 Galaxy server, because I can also show you some nice visualizations there. So, welcome to the Chime 2 Galaxy. Um, I will now just quickly load our own data from my local files. Oops. So this just takes a second to upload. Right. Now, um, on the right hand side, we can see the history. So these are all the files we uploaded to Galaxy. We have the sample metadata. So it's a lo rather large file. Here it has more than 12,000 lines. We have the rooted tree. As you can see, it has the type phylogeny rooted and the filter table oops, of type um, feature table. So we can have a look at this by hitting Chime 2 View and it will automatically open the Chime 2 View in the browser. Now let's look at the provenance. Um, this is actually really great in Chime because all the history of the artifact is saved within the artifact. Um, and this is super useful to have a look at the uh, what was done to that artifact later on. If I, for example, forgot what I was doing to it like a year ago, if I wanna share artifacts with collaborators. Um, but also if you're asking for help on the Chime 2 forum, this is great because by simply looking at the provenance of each artifact, we know exactly where it comes from, what was done to it. So here, for example, this is our feature table and we can see by clicking on this uh, square here that the last method that was applied was uh, to filter it. And we see, we learn so much from it, like we know when it was generated, how long it took. This might sound a bit trivial here because um, it's only a few microseconds, but in practice, if you have a method that runs for hours, before you're rerunning it, maybe check how long it actually took, so that can be helpful. Uh, we can see some parameters that were chosen in that action, but we can also see like in what environment and what platform that was performed, right? So this is really useful for, yeah, just having a look at your artifacts later on again. So I'm gonna close this here, and now let's actually do the diversity um, um, analysis. I'm just gonna type that in here. You can also click through it. Um, so you can see here, this is the diversity core metrics if we don't have any phylogenetic information available, but I'm gonna pick this one, so diversity core metrics phylogenetic, and Galaxy automatically recognizes the artifacts it needs, so our feature table, it recognizes the phylogeny and the metadata, and the only thing I have to add here is the sampling depth, so the rarefaction depth that you um, learned about in an earlier tutorial with um, through the generation of the rarefaction plots. Um, this is something one simply has to get used to, like picking a rarefaction depth. It is There is no like golden rule for it. It's always a question of what you're actually interested in, right? So I'm just gonna hit execute here and um, you see that this action actually produces 17 outputs and therefore it's really useful that we only specify an output directory um, in the com when we're using the command line instead of having to name all of these artifacts. And while this is loading, I'm actually gonna show you what is going on under the hood here. So the first step in this pipeline is to rarify the feature table. And rarefaction is basically just random subsampling from the feature table without replacement. So ultimately that each sample has the same number of features, um, which is very important to reduce bias from varying sampling depth. And this table is a great output because we can also use that in later diversity analysis because it's already normalized, it's already rarefied. Then on the alpha diversity side, um, this pipeline automatically calculates um, some vectors. So for alpha diversity, we only have vectors. So for every sample, we only have one um, value. And these um, have the artifact type sample data alpha diversity. And for beta diversity, it calculates matrices, which makes sense because we're um, actually comparing the samples to each other, right? And of these matrices, it calculates a principal coordinate analysis. 
and these results can then be visualized with an emperor plot. So you already see how many different artifacts this pipeline is automatically generating to us and also how central it is because all of these artifacts can later be used in different analysis um, in Chime 2. Now let's go back. Yes, it all loaded by now. So maybe just let's have a look at um, some of the artifacts that were generated. So here, this is the rarefied table that I talked to you about uh, just a second ago. This is the rarefied table. Then we have these vectors for alpha diversity. We have these distance matrices for beta diversity. We have the PCOA results and we have the visualizations. You can also see that the, the ending change, right? Like it's a different type of artifact instead of like these were all QZA files, but these are QZVs or these are visualizations. So these are emperor plots. Let's have a look at um, maybe this faith PD vector. Again, we just hit um, chime to view. I told you that this type is sample data alpha diversity. And let's look at the provenance of this artifact. So you can see it's actually the same graph, but it's a bit longer now because this artifact of sample data sample data alpha diversity was generated through our pipeline of core metrics phylogene phylogenetic. Um, and this is really useful because it also specifies the sampling depth um, because I tend to forget <laughs> which, one, which one I picked. So um, it, it pays off to have a quick look at the provenance here. So um, what else? These are all the vectors. Uh, we have the distance matrices. Um, these are of um, artifact type distance matrix and then the PCOA results, they're type PCOA results. <laughs> and let's have a very quick look, last but not least, at uh, an emperor plot because these are actually visualizations. Um, and what's great about this pipeline as well is that it generates so many different artifacts automatically for you. So I can even compare different emperor, emperor plots that were generated from different diversity matrices. And you will learn about this in the beta diversity tutorial, but just like on the very first glance, you can already see that these look different and we can gain actually a lot of information from them already. So for example, here, let's have a look at how different samples of patients with different diseases cluster, right? And we don't really see a difference here. Great, so that was a very quick walkthrough through the artifacts generated through the core phylogenetic diversity pipeline. Um, one last word, um, if you wanna learn more, you can always have a look at the Time2 documentation. So for example, um, on this website, just click on plugins and then we can pick the diversity plugin and you can immediately see here the pipelines that are available. So we use the core metrics phylogenetic pipeline and you can learn, for example, if you want to use it in the command line, um, how this command is structured. So how the different inputs you're using. Um, there are some parameters I did not mention. So for example, the PN jobs, which is useful if you have very large data sets. So this is to set the number of jobs or CPU threads used in performing this job. Um, and there are other methods available or visualizers um, yeah, in this plugin. So yeah, I really like this plugin. I think it's really central to the Chime2 workflow. Um, I hope this was useful to you and thanks a lot for listening.